Okay, so the first chunk I'm going to go into of the ice cream marketing funnel is your offline marketing strategies. This is nice, easy territory, I'm sure, for most of you. I'm sure most of you know what these are or you already do them. This is the traditional route. This is what most people have always done. And that's fine, and if it works for you, don't change it. But today, I hope I can expose you to some new ideas. Okay, so let's go into each of these little things and what they are. First one. Um, is offline, it's indirect, and it's promotion. So that's disseminating information about a product, product line, brand, or company. Some of these I'm going to go over quite fast. I do have a tendency to speak too fast, so if I'm going too fast today, just kind of go like this or give me something to tell me to slow it down. But so far, so good? Everyone's happy? Yep. All right. Sponsorship. I'm not going to go into these in detail because you know what they are. You've seen sponsorship. And for a lot of you, if you're small businesses, am I right in presuming you're small businesses here? You're not probably going to be the people that are branding up the major rugby match or the, you know, cricket dude or, you know, getting some Australian cricket guy to endorse your product or service. This isn't probably you. But these are available to you. And if you're kind of hitting a bit of a wall as to what you might do next, consider getting somebody who is a bit of a name, whether it be locally or just because there's some kind of natural fit between them and your business to um, endorse it, be an ambassador. Um, you can consider sponsorship on a small or large level of a local team and things like that. My question to you is, if you're considering any of these, will it give you a return on investment? If not, don't do it. Typically, these things don't always give you a good return on investment. Typically, these things are brand building exercises. So there's something to be aware of. I'm going to the next one. One of my favourite parts of the world, London, where I lived for so long. Who's been there? That very corner. Isn't that crazy little place with all those lights and things? I, I, I look for that on the internet because advertising, that sums it up. Those big names, those bright lights eh, 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 in your face. Again, um, you may or may not <laughs> have the budget to do this billboard form of advertising, which again is really brand awareness. But as you all know, advertising is a form of communication that typically attempts to persuade potential customers to purchase or to consume more of a particular service, or to at least inquire. Um, it's again reinforcing that brand image, brand loyalty. Um, you can do it through all sorts of mediums. You've got TV, you've got radio, you've got cinema, you've got mobiles now, which I'll go into a little bit. You've got the internet now, which is such a big growing area. And you've got video games and billboards. Okay, this is why I'm not a huge fan of advertising. Now, I have to be a bit careful saying this because I worked in media for ages. I was a journalist and then I was an editor. And if we didn't have advertising, we didn't get a wage. And for some people, advertising still works. Like I say, if that that's works for you, do it. But this is why it's not my preferred option. Step one, you've got to find your medium. So let's say you decide to place an ad in the newspaper. The person browses the newspaper. Great, step one achieved. Step two, they identify. You're hoping by being in that newspaper that they see your ad. That's not a given, you're just hoping. And you don't even know that your target market necessarily is reading the ad. They may or may not be, if it's quite a broad audience sort of publication. Step three, we're wanting engagement. We want them to rip out the ad and go, oh, that looks good because you've created the irresistible offer and, to no and or note your phone number down or the offer or the details on it. Step four, there's quite a few steps in this process. This is my point here. They might contact you or they might not because the ad gets left on the coffee table and the papers go on top or they lose it or the daughter, like mine would, screw it up and you, it's, it's, you can't fix it and you can't you know, use it again. Um, ideally, they continue through the process and they might contact you. This is already step five. So they do contact you, but you don't have a, co a sale on your hands. You've just got a lead at this stage. And how well you convert that lead is going to come down to your systems and your sales you know, on the phone or your staff you've trained to do this for you. And then step six, yeah, we've converted them. We've achieved it. You've worked hard and you've got them. But you've gone through all those six steps for that to happen just from placing an ad. And actually before that, you've had to have the copywriting, the thing design, the thing placed, paid for it. It's a lot of labor, really, to get this ad in the paper, isn't it? Think of it that way. All right.